This video is brought to you today by Rebel Massage Sore Loser Total Meltdown Professional Bodywork Butter because I got new labels and I love them. Fun fact about the latissimus dorsi muscle. Most people think of it as a shoulder muscle and the muscle that could possibly help us fly. Like if Michael Phelps were to jump off a cliff, he would catch some air like a flying squirrel. But the word latissimus actually means broadest and the word dorsi comes from dorsum meaning back. So it's actually a back muscle. It does influence the shoulder, but you're gonna see me starting off with a lot of back work because dorsi. The origin of this muscle spans across the lower half of the vertebrae, the back of the hip, a couple of ribs, and the bottom corner of the scapula. But the part of the lats that really anchors this muscle down is the thoracolumbar aponeurosis. And I want to spend a good amount of time focused on this piece of connective tissue because if we don't, it would be like only watering the petally parts of a flower. The roots definitely need attending to. So I'm starting by guiding this broad sheet away from its anchoring sites and urging it to loosen up at the muscle belly itself. If you can see, I've got my right hand doing the work, pushing up towards the shoulder, and my left hand is hooked down, stabilizing the other side and the bones underneath to make sure my work is effective. So I can stay in this mode if I want to, or I can switch to two-handed mode, which is just gonna give me a little more power and allow me a little more depth. It's also, as a bonus, going to offer me a better advantage mechanically. I'm sinking in with my palms and I'm allowing my fingers to relax, which is just so much easier on my body. And then, because I haven't overused my thumbs, I can use them when I'm ready to. I'm going to support one thumb with another and I'm focused on pushing from the spine, out laterally, staying in that myofascial release zone and opening up that thoracolumbar aponeurosis. I'm going to offer the hips a little bit of a shake before I move on because, you know, shaking out the roots of a plant can prevent root rot. And as I do that, I just want to reinforce this whole flower idea. So the roots of the lats are anchored into the hip and the spine, and as they start to move up towards the shoulder, they branch out and open up the same way that a flower would. And some of these petals really go their own way, except for one, the teres major, which is considered lats little helper, and it's also going to be a focus of a lot of my work today. As I start working my way up the stem, I'm sliding my fingers across diagonally because as the lats converge, they dive down underneath the armpit or the axillary area and attach themselves onto the front of the shoulder. So they're going from this very broad position to this very narrow point and that convergence puts a lot of pressure on where the connective tissue becomes muscle tissue. Now that I'm up into the belly of the muscle, the main thing that I want to remember is that the lats pull the arm into a deduction. So lots of pull-ups, lots of swimming, but also lots of guarding and lots of protection. So I want to hold that intention while I'm working into this vulnerable area and make sure that my client's arm is letting go. I'm grabbing the lats here and the teres major underneath and really placing them into the palm of my hand. I'm using my fingers to pull them away from the scapula and the rib cage and starting to offer them that freedom of movement. Once I feel like they're loosening up, I'm just going to remind my client that he can really let his arm go. As I reach over and guide his arm away from his rib cage, I'm just going to ask him to think about the space that I'm creating. The arm, mostly for women, but also for men, really likes to stick to the torso. And the lats are the muscle that make that happen. So by creating some space where there usually is none, I'm offering the lats and the teres major a break. If you remember back a couple minutes ago, I mentioned the bottom corner of the scapula as one of the attachment sites for the lats. And so I don't want to ignore it because I love detail. So I'm taking a moment, palpating where this inferior angle is and working through some of the tension that can lie here. The lats can pull the scapula down to the rib cage if they're too stuck. So using both hands to make sure the scapula is moving around, I wanna unstick all these moving parts and just reinforce the connection of this huge muscle. I'm about to reposition the arm and use a different approach, but before I do, I just wanna connect the hip through the shoulder, through the neck and the head. I'm using my right palm here to push down and out laterally, and using my left fingers to pull the lats and the lateral scapula up towards me, because connection is awesome.
Back over at the same side of the table, I'm pulling my client's arm away from his torso at a 90 degree angle and letting his forearm drop down towards the floor. In my opinion, this is my favorite position for work into the lats. The arm isn't too close, so it's easy to get in, and it's not all the way abducted, stretching the lats out, which makes them harder to grab. This is where knowing your anatomy is a handy little trick. The lats are gonna be most superficial, so when I start to grab at them, they're gonna fall into the palm of my hand. My fingers then are gonna start grabbing onto the teres major at the more inferior portion of the scapula, and then the teres minor, which is deeper and way tucked up into the back of the armpit. So if I sink down through all of this tissue and try to find the lateral border of the scapula, what I'm gonna find is that they veer away from each other, like those petals on that flower that are starting to separate out, and knowing which fibers go where is amazing information to knowing which techniques you're gonna use. So, the teres minor and the infraspinatus shoot off to the back of the shoulder while the teres major and the lats are gonna slide underneath the armpit and attach onto the front of the shoulder. This means that if I sink into these muscles and I'm focused on the lats and the teres major, I'm gonna use my thumb to lift up from the anterior portion of the lateral border of the scapula. There's a nice little trick to help you confirm which muscles you're on, and I'll show you that in a minute. But while I'm working into the lats, I wanna acknowledge how easy it is to nuance your work. I could be gripping down with my fingers to focus on the teres minor and the infraspinatus and the posterior deltoids, but instead I'm lifting up from the table and pushing all of these tissues into a lengthened position, compressing in with my thumbs, and directly impacting the muscles I wanna target. Remember a couple seconds ago when I told you about that cool trick? Well, here it is. So I've got my knee placed right in front of his hand, and as I ask him to push his hand into my knee, he's moving into internal rotation. That means that the lats and the teres major are doing their job, and I can see them contract and I can feel them pop out into my hands. Here's the thing. While he's pushing his arm against my knee into internal rotation, I'm compressing against those contracted tissues. So the lats and the teres major are doing their job. And then when they let go, I'm able to sink in a lot deeper and access any trigger points or holding patterns that are buried under the superficial tissues. And that's kind of what this is all about, right? So when he lets go, I can do a couple of different things. I can either stay focused on the lateral border of the scapula and create some nice friction along where all of these muscles meet and intertwine and sometimes don't get along. The act of engaging them first kind of separates them out and puts them into their corner so that when you reintroduce them to each other, you're reteaching them how they can get along and how they can help the shoulder to feel normal. Or if I wanna switch things up, I'm gonna have my client push into internal rotation again, compress against that contraction, and then instead of separating them out into their corners, I'm gonna force them together. When he lets go, I'm applying some pretty intense pressure right into the intersection of where all of these muscles meet before they separate out to the back of the shoulder and the front of the shoulder, and I want them to get along. So you could say I'm kind of making them play nice. Remembering that the lats and the teres dive down underneath the humerus, this is where the subtle difference of the angle of your compression can make such a huge difference. Directing your compression into the muscles that you're targeting is the kind of detail that's gonna elevate your work. If you think about it, body work is kind of like gardening. Lots of detail, lots to know, lots of attention, except no canvas gloves and no brim tap. So there's all this talk about the origin of the humerus, but the insertion is equally as powerful. It is a shoulder muscle after all. And like I've been saying, it slides underneath the armpit and wraps around to the front and latches on to the intertubercular groove of the humerus, which is just a fancy way of saying the front of the top of the arm bone. So I wanna give it a little attention. I'm flipping around the way that I work here a little bit. I've got my left hand tucked underneath the front of the shoulder and I'm pressing my fingers up into that insertion point using the table as leverage and then also using my right hand to push down onto that pressure. I find that when I do this, it gives me a greater perspective of what's going on globally for my client's shoulder and also gives my client a lot more awareness about what they're feeling. In an effort to reinforce this, I'm using that pressure with my left fingers up against the front of the shoulder at the insertion and using my right hand to move around the belly of the muscle. 
This gives the muscle some kind of connection and gives the shoulder a lot greater understanding of all these moving parts. So, so far I've worked on the lats in a softened position, in a neutral position, and now I'm ready to stretch them out. The advantage to this position is now I can work on the lats in relation to the muscles that are deeper to the lats, like the teres major, which it should be working in tandem with, but often doesn't. This can occur mostly when the tissues are really stuck together and that can happen when they don't get stretched out. So from this stretched out position, I'm sinking in deeper to the lats and getting into that teres major and making sure that the connective tissue that wraps around each of these muscles to form these tendons that wrap under the armpit and attach onto the front of the shoulder are actually sliding against each other and not stuck like scrambled eggs on the bottom of a fry pan. Using the power of both of my hands here, because I've got two of them, I'm taking my left hand and grabbing onto the top of the scapula and pulling it down a little bit as I use my right hand to free up all of these attachments on the lateral scapula. I'm creating a friction as I do this and movement as I do this so that the loosening and the lengthening actually takes place. One more time just for posterity. If you keep your work focused on the anterior portion of this chunk of muscles, you're targeting the latissimus dorsi and the teres major, which is just gonna prove to your client that when they ask for work on these muscles, that you know exactly what you're doing. And lastly, just to connect your work from the root through the stem all the way up into the petals that make up this shoulder, you've got yourself one funny looking flower. Before you go, I've got this amazing event coming up, the Shoulder Jam. 10 industry leaders, five days, one body part. I'll include the link in the description below.